Good morning, good morning, and welcome to the Brenda Perryman Show right here on TV 33, WHPR, Comcast 20 in Detroit, and it is a beautiful day. I felt a few sprinkles this morning, but it is a beautiful, beautiful day. And before I go on with the show and my wonderful guests, I'd like to tell you that it's on and popping. Come one and come all. This is your invitation to join R.J. Watkins as he and the staff here at WHPR celebrate celebrate Henry H.T. Tyler's 65th birthday. That's a week from this Sunday, April 27th at 2 p.m. till 6 p.m. Come and join RJ and me and the rest of the staff here as we honor the gentle giant as he reaches this great milestone. And he doesn't have a gray hair on his head or on his chin. I said, Henry, how do you do that? Anyway, birthday <laughs> cards are deeply appreciated. And remember, join us, 160 Victor, Saturday, Sunday the 27th, and have some cake with Henry Tyler. And don't miss the fun. It's going to be a great time. But after you have that cake, you have to brush your teeth and floss. And today I have the dentist here, Doctors, Doctors Ronald and Doctors Blake Livingston. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Brenda Perryman is the queen of segues there. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you tie Tanya. Well, you know, the thing is, I wasn't going to tell them to... Eat cake and not oh, that's okay. not clean their teeth you because yeah. we know that sugar can be the enemy. And that's something I heard yesterday. And before we talk about this great news, everybody, we have great news for you about dental care too. Uh, sugar is the enemy, isn't it, of teeth? It is the enemy of teeth. It's the enemy of your whole body, really. Technically, you know, sugar is bad from the head to the toe, unfortunately, as delicious as it is. God, I love <laughs> And I think mostly too, it's the uh, a lot of it is the refined white sugars that are bleached, just like the flour and all the chemicals there, uh, processes that the sugar goes to to make it look white and and uh, flavorful the way we want it to. I think the natural sugars that are usually see are brown. If you ever go to a restaurant and they have that packet of natural sugar and you pour it out, you hey this is this is brown and that's the natural color of the sugar. So when they bleach it and process it and turn it white, it also causes it to become uh, not so healthy. So what about artificial sugars? I don't know. I think the jury is still kind of out on that. I, we see people who claim they drink Diet Pop only, but they still have decay. So. Now, with Diet Pop, <clears throat> just like regular pop, you still have acid, though. Right. And acid will co wear down the enamel on your teeth. Right. Um, now, art other artificial sugars. Now, enamel, mm -hmm. is that what makes teeth shine? Enamel is what, it? yeah, it's what makes it shine. It was, it's, it's what makes them hard, also. Enamel is the hardest surface in the human body, harder than your bones. But it's still susceptible if you let sugar build up on the acid, wear, you know, wear down on the enamel. Um, artificial sugars in general, xylitol is one of the artificial sugars that is starting to gain some popularity. Xylitol, is there a packet with that? They do have packets of it. Um, it's called Spry, is the, is the brand name. Really? Yeah. I've um, never heard of that. It's a little bit more expensive. You probably have to find it at a health food store more than a, than a regular grocery store. But xylitol actually fights cavities. It inhibits the really uh, yes. Right. It inhibits the acid formation. I'm well, also it. there's there's xylitols. A lot of gums now have xylitol as their sugar in it. So it'll say with xylitol. What's the one that Trident? Trident. Trident has xylitol in it, and it tastes just like regular gum. Yeah, you can't. And xylitol it actually helps and strengthens your teeth. So look for products with so xylitol. So sugar is the enemy. Is the enemy. Sugar is the and of course, it contributes to other diabetes. And I know, stuff. diabetes and everything. Right. By the way, I'm interviewing next week. Um, I'm doing an interview, phone interview, the day before the show. And that's with Esapatha Murkison, who played oh, the yeah. lieutenant on Law and or yeah. Order. Mm -hmm. She's going to be talking about oh, wow. diabetes. Wow. And oh, so okay. we're going to be talking about that because that's something that afflicts us as a people and last night I was just talking to my son on the phone and he says I hope I don't get diabetes because it does run in my family right. you know my grandmother right. had it and so forth it's but hereditary. let's tell the people the good news before we get back to sugar because I really want to talk about this sugar thing <laughs> I love sugar so much I do too yeah me too I, I, nobody's gonna argue with that <laughs> when everything good to you is not good for you so 
Yeah, like it men. Used a, some used men. Used to be a song. It used to be a song like that. <laughs> so like some men. It used to be a song. They're good <laughs> to you, but not good for you. Uh, but that's a whole nother a, topic. Right, those are different guests. Let's tell the audience. <laughs> those are different guests. Let's tell the audience the good news. And everyone, you need to listen to this, especially if you haven't had dental care in a long time. All right, I want to talk about it. The Healthy Michigan Plan. This is a uh, this is an addition to the Affordable Care Act. It uh, previously we had said you know Obamacare. There's no dental insurance attached with Obamacare. However, on April 1st, the Healthy Michigan Plan came into effect, which was a Medicaid expansion, which starts to which allows people who weren't getting Medicaid before, or even people that were getting Medicaid before but have some some sort of income. Um, qualify for a new dental plan. Uh, it's through Delta Dental, and we've seen a variety of people who have different health insurances, total health care, uh, Midwest. Midwest, and then when they get their health care card, dental insurance is automatically attached with it, and they get a card that's Delta Dental. Um, to qualify for this plan, there's a few requirements. You have to be between the ages of 19 and 64, um, have income at or below 133% of the federal poverty level, which means $16,000 for a single person or $33,000 for a family of four. Okay, 16000 or less if you're alone. If you're, if you're right. alone. Right. And 33000 if you have a family of Correct. four. It says family of four. You know, uh, either way, what you're going to want to do, you can apply for it. You want to talk to your representative at the Department of Human Services. Or go to the MI Bridges, Michigan.gov slash MI Bridges, and you can apply. And there's also a phone number, 855 789 5610. That's a toll free phone number. And you can find out uh, if you qualify and if you can apply for that. So <clears throat> I hear that like 200,000 people in Michigan will be able to. Well, what they've said is that 200,000 people in just in Metro Detroit. Metro Detroit. Right. 200,000 people in Metro Detroit qualify for this plan. This plan, you can also be paying for your own insurance, and you can also still apply for this plan to be a supplemental insurance, and you have no co-pays with this plan. No co-pays. Zero co-pays. And we're talking about dentures, partials, cleanings, x-rays, fillings. Extractions. Uh, extractions. Uh, many, many, many procedures that previously wouldn't have been covered. And these are the uh, procedures and uh, treatment that you would get and your co-payment is zero. This is unheard of. And this is real, this is a real program through Delta Dental Plan, which is one of the top dental plans that there are. This is the same, Delta Dental Plan is what the UAW and what the auto workers have. So this, wow. is, this, is, this is an incredible uh, breakthrough. Well, I have it. Thank you, President Obama. Because yeah. without President Obama, we wouldn't be. Well, that needs to be played up more. Oh, yeah. It's Obamacare as far as I'm concerned. Because when it be, when, a year from now, when everybody is happy with health care and healthy, then uh, they'll want to call it Affordable Care Act and take President Obama's name out of it. But President Obama is, is responsible for this, and he should get all the credit. He should go on the history. This is Obamacare. Yeah, but the Tea Party has made up that name. That's why I don't like it. We won't go there because I, 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 yeah. I have a opinion on that we won't discuss yeah that. maybe we'll discuss it later right but, <laughs> the but guest doesn't at the up. same time i will say that uh i have to give the uh governor some credit on this because he chose to participate in this plan a lot of republican governors rejected the medicaid expansion right and allowed their people to suffer over political uh, reasons because this is this is a godsend here we see patients this patient this program just became effective april 1st and we've seen quite a few patients who have never been to the dentist or haven't been to the dentist in 20 years and have suffered. And we see them now, and they literally are just have a smile. They're just happy. They're just elated. That they, and they just can't believe it. I have real insurance now. And I say this is real insurance. I've had a lot of people come and tell me, you know, they had Medicaid before, and they wanted to get things that Medicaid didn't cover. They needed dentures, they needed partials, or they needed a crown, or, or they needed an extraction, and just they couldn't find someone to provide the care that they needed in a timely fashion. Whereas with this plan, this expands the amount of providers that you'd be able to go to, the amount of dentists that you'd be able to go to. This really opens really? a lot of doors for a lot of people. This because includes specialists. Since, yeah, it includes specialists. Like um, ones who do oral surgeons, oral surgeons. You, oral surgeons, gum specialists, you name wow. it. There. Did you say uh, we sent somebody to oral surgeon yesterday who needed... Uh, General anesthesia to be put to sleep. Yeah, and it covers general anesthesia. 
No, that's that's You're incredible. not kidding me. Yep. Yep. It, yep. A lot of regular dental insurance is the people are paying out of pocket for. To cover I know. General anesthesia. Right. I know. Absolutely. That is, this is something to rejoice about this because is, they can take their children. Um, they can take themselves. Now, under um, regular Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, the medical plans also have embedded where uh, young people un under age 19 are covered under the medical insurance under Obamacare, too. This is the separate, the Michigan, uh, Healthy Michigan plan is for those age 19 to 64, and uh, but they and they have a separate, will you get a separate card or something? Uh, yeah, you get a separate card. A lot of people who have come into our office with this plan, they say, you know, I applied for the health care, and I just got this dental care card with it. I didn't even know I was going to get it. Yeah. And honestly, it's truly a blessing because the reimbursement that they that they provide gives you much more opportunities to actually get work done. Right. Wow, that's wonderful. How do Dennis feel about this? I can't speak for anybody but me and him, but we're real happy. <laughs> oh. Well, it's, I mean, it's we, it, we get patients all the time, and we were unable to take traditional Medicaid because the reimbursement levels were so low. I'll give you an example. If a patient wanted to get a partial, the cost of the partial for me to make the partial was more than what I was being reimbursed at. So I actually took a loss on that. And as I mentioned before, you know, the first law of business is you can't s spend more than you take in. So that, that kept people from taking Medicaid. Even, we would refer them to offices, which would be major clinics. The only way people that could really, a provider, a dentist could take Medicaid is if they had a real uh, big popul Medicaid population where they saw hundreds of people, which meant you waited a long time and that type of thing. Well, what if you're a college student or, or an emancipated college student? Right. You don't live at home, you're not with your parents, and you work a part-time job. Oh, we have a couple of calls. So we have Anthony. Good morning, Anthony. Good morning. How are you? Fine, fine. Good morning. You know, I spoke to you on your last time on the show, and you said you didn't accept Medicaid. Are you now accepting it? We are accepting the Healthy Michigan Plan, Delta Dental Plan. Yeah. This is it's through Medicaid. You have to apply for it to see if you qualify for it. But like I said, we've had some people who have gotten this card and they didn't even know that they were going to get it. So if you, we don't take normal Medicaid, we take the Healthy Michigan Plan, which, 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 which you'll get a separate card right. from Delta Dental with a separate ID number that's not your social security Could you number. give him that number? Absolutely. That phone number is 855-789-5610. Could you do it again slower, please? Sure. No problem. 855-789-5610. One zero. Thank you. Thank no you. problem. Thank you, Anthony. And we'll announce that number Happy again. Easter. Um, and our phone number too is three one three eight eight three three zero five zero. They also we can tell you over the phone if you're covered. If you have that card and have that ID number, oh, we can check it. Well, um, say your number oh, again. Okay, it's uh, area code three one three eight eight three three zero five zero. The the young ladies at our office who are there now. Uh, if they get your information, they can go in the computer, and if you have your ID number from that plan, they can tell you well that you're covered. Okay, we have another call. Good morning. Oh uh, yeah, good morning. Uh, I, that's what I needed to the, the, to get the correct number. It was seven eight nine five six one zero, and then there's an eight five five in front of it. And your number is eight eight three three zero five zero. That's correct. Uh, I was happy to be able to. Uh, Thanks to Obama, I was able to get the insurance that I already had. So everything I had is back in place, and, I, and so I'm thankful to Obama as well. Yes, I see. will be calling your office. I am in dire need of a dentist. Well, you can call <laughs> but us I'm going to make me. sure I get the uh, support I need so you that can call uh, you right guys now. can get paid. Thanks for so much good information. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Right. you. You're could, welcome. You could call right now. Someone's in the office, right? Yeah, they're, right. they're there now. And, and they are able to, if you have uh, received that coverage, they can verify it over the phone and set you up an appointment and if not they can also give you uh information on how who to call and how to uh, get signed up for that now this is this is this is a great plan because it, it takes care of the people who are working but they didn't have insurance they didn't qualify for medicaid because they were working but now that they're working they also didn't have enough income possibly to spread it was spread too thin for them to get the dental care that they needed now this will give them actual insurance under Delta Dental Plan. Like, say, this is, you can't beat that. And I say, I do want to give like a, a, a shout out to the to the governor because he didn't have to do this and he he bucked the trend and, and turned his 
turned his face towards the people and said that this is something that's going to help the people and it's really helping especially the citizens of Detroit and Wayne County. Because a lot of, a lot of like you said, the Republican governors, they rejected the Medicaid well, I expansion. Know, I have a former student who lives in... Um, Michael, oh, a former student who lives in Shreveport, Louisiana, who can't get it mm-hmm. because right. of Governor Jindal. Bobby Jindal, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. Little Bobby Jindal, yeah. Yeah, I don't know about him. But uh, he actually thinks he's going to run for president. He's not going to be president. And yeah, I just say, don't waste your money. Well, I think the Republicans might back him. They need a brown skinned person to run to trick all the other brown skinned people who are uninformed and think that he's uh, on their side. Yeah, <laughs> but he's, once he opens his mouth, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, yeah, but, you know, uh, some people have an agenda that's strong. They're not really for the people anyway, so it, they're, that's, that, their head right. is not that. But they claim, to, you know, they're supposedly Christians, but they hate the poor. You know, that's that. I don't know how they reconcile that. But anyway, back to dentistry. <laughs> yeah, we'll, yeah, I know, we'll but you up. know, it just, it just, I, I'm happy, really, really happy about this. But they need to publicize it more, and I guess right. that's why we have you on the program to right. let our people know. Let our people know. <laughs> you know, even on their website, they talk about the Healthy Michigan Plan. The Healthy Michigan Plan includes, uh, you know, the medical coverage also, and the dentistry, the dental part is just secondary. Because so. there's some people who are trying to support themselves and support their families on Correct. very low income yep. and this will co- this will help cover you know anyone between the age of 19 and 64 all right and that that covers a lot of people and for people to be able to receive dentures and that oh, type of thing so what if at the, no cost so if the person's incredible. 65 they'll be probably cut under medicare at that point i think oh, that's why they got the yeah, cut off there at 65 yeah. i think you're eligible for medicare and Medicare does have supplemental insurances that are dental. Right. Oh, they do? Yes. Right. Medicare Part D. D is up for, for prescriptions, but in some supplemental plans you'd have to pick up. Or uh, what is the one with There's Blue Cross? There's a Blue Cross. Cross. Yeah. Blue Cross Advantage, Advantage right. is the Medicare dental coverage. Right. Really? Yes. Right. And we do accept that. Yeah. And a lot of these things are, are moving fast. Things are happening. I say a lot of this plan just went into effect April 1st. But it's not an April Fool's joke, but it went into effect April 1st. And I say we've been, patients have really been responsive to this because they've been really in dire need. And like I say, it's for a lot of people who work and needed dental insurance, or even if they work part-time, they qualify for this. So this has been a, a, a godsend for them to uh, be able to do this and take care of their families. This is one of the big issues in dentistry that that you read in any uh, MDA journal. MDA is the Michigan Dental Association. They send out a journal every month. And the American Dental Association also sends out a journal every month. And one of the big issues is access to care. And the reason that access to care is an issue is because not enough providers who accept Medicaid. This is a, is a direct hit to that. This is dead on. This is exactly what people needed because this will help increase the number of providers who are accepting people's dental plans, and it will give a lot more people coverage. Right. They weren't even eligible for that type of coverage before. That is amazing. And when you talk about uh, now the specialists are involved in this, and patients can get specialist care, oral surgery, they can get sedation, that type of thing. Uh, we have uh, the top-notch oral surgeon that we use in the area. Who is it? Uh, Dr. Yapa in Southfield. And we also use Dr. Owens here in Detroit. And, uh, you know, to be able to see those those uh, doctors, you know, now are able to do things and uh, provide service to these patients, it's incredible. I say this is top notch care they're going to receive. This is, That's this amazing. Is, yeah, this is this is something I say we're really we're really uh, happy now. I had read previously where a lot of these states you talk about Bobby Jindal in Louisiana before a lot the excuse a lot of these uh, governors were using is that I think this is only for three years and then after that the states have to pick up the cost on it so they use it as an excuse oh well in three years from now we'll have to pick up the cost well three years from now a lot of things can change the economy can turn around uh, people can demand it people will be happy with this and won't let it go just like Obamacare now that Obamacare is here I don't care what those other folks say they will not take those people's uh, benefits away from them once they have received them and received medical care that they could not receive previously so now that they can go to the doctor they can receive these treatments and operations and then uh, somebody else gets in office and decides they're going to take that away, that's a joke. They can quit running those silly commercials. Yeah, repealing it. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's not going to happen. It's the law of the land. It's yeah, not going to happen. Court already said it. Right. He, you know what part right. of that is about. Well, it's funny you how when, 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 when the law is in our favor, they don't want to respect it, but when it's in, our, in, in their favor, we have to respect it. So the Supreme Court says it's the law of the land, but they still play these silly commercials. That's, that's just dirty, 
dirty, fighting dirty. Right, that's fighting dirty. Well, I had a question I wanted to ask you about dental care, about and you kind of ta- touched on it last week, but I have, you know, ever since I've been having you on the show, I noticed teeth all over the place. Gosh, I'm so cognizant of teeth, and teeth can change the shape of your mouth, can't they? In the front, absolutely. And stuff. Absolutely, you know. In the front, your eye teeth, your canines. These teeth? Yep. Those teeth are the longest teeth that you have, okay? And right there, that bony area is called the canine eminence. When those canines are gone, your face sinks in, okay? And also, you know, if you're missing teeth, sometimes you see, you know, you see an old lady with no teeth and her face is all sucked in. That's because those teeth and that bone provide support in your face. You know, a denture acts like a miniature facelift a lot of times for people who haven't had any teeth in a long time um, and your muscles they, they they shrink they atrophy okay because they're not used to they're, they're used to being supported by the teeth and by the bones so once the once those are replaced the face starts to look full again so how often after a person has their teeth removed you say if somebody says I'm gonna get two plates mm-hmm is that two plates? Am mm-hmm. I saying it right? Sure. Uh, and they have all their teeth removed. Do you put the plate on right after their teeth are removed? We can. Um, it depends on the situation. Uh, that's an immediate denture where you take the teeth out and put the denture in right away. Certain situations call for that. Certain situations uh, don't allow for that. Well, in, in many cases nowadays, we can do that. As, as you notice. You know, back in the day when I first started, don't you put something on the gums or something? Or oh no, just... they're they're it it it's done in a way that's made comfortable. We, there's a lot of uh, preparation that we have to do in advance to make sure that it fits comfortably and and it's comfortable to the patient. So there's a lot of stages in terms of taking impressions in the bite and trying in the teeth before we're finished and that kind of thing. A lot of times I I like to do it in two stages. We'll remove the back teeth first, let that heal, leave them with the front teeth. Then by the time we put the dentures in, we're only removing six teeth on the top and six on the bottom. And so the, the dentures are supported by the roof of your mouth and by your jaw in the back. So it's not pushing into that area where the surgery was done. We never have any complaints out of it. Every once in a while, after it heals a little bit, we may put a soft liner in there to make it more comfortable to them. I've known some people, I, I know somebody who told me they did that. They, they had their t- a teeth removed and they put a denture in right away, and I just said, oh, God, it just seems like that would just hurt. But. Well, you, you have to stop and think, and even a situation like yourself, people have social obligations, and you don't see people disappear for eight weeks and wait for it to heal to get their teeth. They have to have that done because they have to go to work. They have things that they have to do, and they can't walk around uh, without their teeth for you know six, eight weeks. So there are many situations, most of the times we can do it that way. There are a few instances where we can't, as in if their gum disease was just so severe, they have no bone left and it won't support the denture properly. So we'll advise them to have it healed at that point. Or if they're a severe diabetic, or if they've had radiation treatment or have other medical issues that don't allow us to do that. But those patients usually understand because they're in a severe state when they get to us. Now, cosmetic dentistry, would you talk about that a little? Sure, cosmetic dentistry, you know, our focus when we're doing cosmetic dentistry is to go for whatever aesthetic appearance the patient desires. Um, You know, there's different procedures. We can do veneers or composite bonding are the two most common um, aesthetic procedures. What is a composite bonding? Composite is the material that we use when we do a tooth-colored filling. Okay, and what we do is it's essentially the same as a veneer. A veneer is... um, it's like it's porcelain. A veneer is porcelain. A composite is the tooth color filling material. Well, either way, what we do is we shave down a little bit of the tooth and replace that front of the tooth with the, either a veneer or composite bonding. Now, is that the kind of fat thing that go? I mean, I see some people with their teeth look real fat. No, actually, uh, mostly what we tend to do is because it's less expensive, is composite bonding, which is done in the chair. We can usually do it in one visit and in majority of times there's no anesthetic no shot involved because what we're doing is we're building up the layers of the teeth using this composite material <laughs> and we use a special light that hardens the material while you're sitting there and the patients enjoy well, they like to see it because a lot of times they sit there with the mirror and they can say oh well build this up a little bit or bring this out really? a little bit oh yeah they that's, sit there. that's one of the benefits of composite bonding over right. veneers is 
The veneers you can get a wax up from the lab and they'll show you what it's going to look like. Well, that takes a week, you know, you get the wax up and the patient comes in, you want to show them the wax up, they tell you whether they like it, they want to adjust this or that. Composite bonding, it's called direct, it's a direct veneer. You're in the chair, I'm adjusting it while you're looking at it and you tell me how you want it. And we, we actually have, uh, we have a website, uh, livingstondentistry.com that has some before and after pictures mm -hmm. on there that you can actually see that. If you go on the website, you'll see actual patients who have had some of these procedures done that are, like I say, real people. They're not out of a magazine picture we took. They're our actual patients before and after. And they were happy, they were proud. Of Put my picture on the wall, I want people to see this. So they, they, they're happy to show the before and after. Right, so that would be um, livingstondentistry.com. That's correct. That you're That's able correct. to do. Yeah. What is the most common, not ailment, I guess, um, I, I, I hate to talk about an ailment or issue mm -hmm. that you see the most. The number one issue in adults in the United States is gum disease. All right. Gum disease is a chronic disease. It's the, it affects a majority of adults over the age of 40, like 75% have at least some form of gum disease, Ging whether it be gingivitis or actually periodontitis, which is where the bone and the supporting structures of the teeth has started to be get destroyed. How, how can you ward against that? You, you say it's so much. It's prevalent because people have poor oral hygiene. That's the, that's bottom line. Or, and, and also they haven't been able to see a dentist in a good while. So in spite of their diligent brushing and flossing and working hard as they can, that tartar and that plaque and bacteria are going to accumulate and grow over time no matter what you do. So some of it, I, we've seen patients and their oral hygiene is not bad. They've, they've taken good care of their tried as best they can, but they just haven't had a, a professional cleaning in such a long time. That tartar accumulates. If you want to know, look on the inside of your lower front teeth in the mirror, and if you see that build up there, you got it. Okay, we have Mrs. Brooks on the line. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, I was calling because I was wondering if I was uh, would be able to apply for the program if I'm uh, retired from the city. You know, mm. they took all That's our a good question. insurance benefits. Um would I be able to qualify for this? If if you meet the qualifications plan? for income and you're within that age group, you should go on the website and check it out and see if you can. Um, uh, the website is www.michigan.gov forward slash mi bridges. What's the phone number? And the phone easier. number is 855 789. Five six one zero. Turn your TV down, please. We'll repeat. We'll repeat the number again as yeah, we, before the turn show your is TV. over. Too. Can you hear us? This might be gone. Hello. But, but the bottom line, too, with with that, if you have an affordable care plan, medical plan, I think I can't. I can't hear you. Okay. Oh, you can't hear us. No. <laughs> if, if you have, you if, can't hear us. No. Oh, you have to turn no, the TV I can, down. I can't hear you now. <laughs> you can't hear us. No, no, I can't hear you now. We'll we'll repeat all the information, okay? We'll repeat. We'll repeat all the information a little bit later on in the show, so we can give you all the phone numbers, websites, everything you need to know. So have your pen and paper. Ready. Have your pen and paper ready. So what was your question? Thank you. Thank you. Um. We're asked about, oh, what's the most common ailment? So we're talking about gum disease. Um, also, too, the most primary uh, uh, thing that people will see is uh, bleeding gums. Your gums are not supposed to bleed when you brush. And I always, always tell patients, if you brush your hair and you get blood, you'd be concerned. So if you brush your teeth, you get blood, you should be concerned. If you have an area where, there, I had a discussion with a patient the other day, where he had an abscess, and when he pressed there, you know, he got pus and that type of thing. And uh, I asked him how long it's been going on. He says about a month. And I asked him, I said, if your elbow had pus coming out for a month, would you check it out? Or would you just let that pus come out of your elbow for a month? That's not a good. You would run to the emergency room the first day if you saw some type of infection that wasn't being treated. And so we took care of it and got him in good shape. He ended up needing a root canal. An abscess. That's an infection, right? Correct. And how does it manifest itself how does it look how, how would i know i had an abscess? an abscess looks like a pimple on your gums it's like a whitehead on your gums abscess occurs when there's infection at the end of a root of a tooth and that infection is looking for it wants to spread it wants to grow okay and it's looking for a way out it follows the path of least resistance typically that path of least resistance is 
out towards the cheek side of your gums. Um, and it makes a little hole and makes a little bubble, a little pimple on your gums, and then it bursts and pus starts to come out right. of there. Or, but, your, or your entire face could swell up. That's, right. also that's the other sense. alternative. If, you, if that's not treated, the next stage is that you get facial swelling, which you've seen some people yeah, have I've before. Yeah, I've seen that, yeah. and that's a scary thing. Right. right, and that's not anything to play with. That can turn into a cellulitis, which is a hard board-like swelling, which can travel to other parts of your body. And well, an abscess inside. can kill you. Even oh, yeah, an abscess can. You can have an abscess anywhere in your body. Any, anything that becomes infected can a internally boil, or externally. A boil can turn into an Correct. abscess. Correct. Well, an abscess is the is the 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 outpouching where it, you know puffs Swelling. up and it and it and it bursts and you start to see drainage. Right. So an abscess is actually better than the alternative of swelling. Right. Because that's both At least ways the infection is looking for a route to escape or grow, right. and if it busts out the side and you got an abscess, that's better than it's draining as opposed to your whole jaw swelling. Correct. And also, too, you know, it, uh, and I also explain to patients, we see patients, they eat healthy, they exercise, but they have gum disease. But they, in their mind, they're in good shape, they work out, they take care of their bodies, and uh, they, they eat brush naturally, their teeth. but they have gum disease. Gum disease is a chronic uh, inflammatory process and or an effect, infection that's going on in your body is fighting that infection and inflammation 24-7. The rest of your body can't be healthy if it's always on guard fighting this infection. The same thing I say, if it was an infection anywhere else, if it was in your arm, it's not a good thing. It's, if it's in your mouth, it's not a good thing. And chronic infection, you know, you're more susceptible for other diseases, other illnesses, because your immune system is constantly battling something. Right. I'm going to ask you the question, where do toothaches come from? A toothache comes from, you know, that, remember we talked about the enamel, the outer shell of yeah. the tooth. In, so underneath the enamel is something called dentin, which is a softer substance. It's more porous. Now, inside of that dentin is the nerve of the tooth. Okay, so we have three layers oh. of the tooth. When that enamel is broken and that dentin can communicate with that, well, the outside environment can communicate with the nerve through the dentin as opposed to hitting the enamel and stopping, then you start to feel a throbbing or a pain. That's due to the pulp of the tooth, the nerve of the tooth being irritated. Okay, a toothache is due to something irritating the pulp. The nerve. The nerve. Once that bacteria reaches the nerve, you, you get a toothache. As long as the bacteria in that cavity That's is small. That's the worst feeling in the world. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've had people tell me the toothache hurt worse than giving birth. <laughs> yeah, well, I can but, say that. And they've also said had such relief after you've taken care of them and that toothache is gone. They are so happy and overjoyed. My that, thing is, kill me, kill yeah, me. Yeah, well, you know, and a lot of times we'll see patients and, you know, we'll take an x-ray or whatever, just to even determine. We just give them a little anesthetic first and you can see that expression on their face where they've They've had pain, and now their pain is gone, and they just can't believe that they're, they're on their way to being happy again because that's, that's not a good day. Yeah, I mean, it's just... But it's, it's, it's totally avoidable, too, so... It's avoidable. Yeah, you want to go to the dentist and get x-rays, and you want to see if something is happening How there. How often should you get the x-rays, though? That's a good question. Dental x-rays, I want to make something very clear. The, the amount of radiation that you receive from a dental x-ray is negligible. Oh, really? Because right. uh, mm. X radiation, damage from radiation is a cumulative thing, which means one exposure, two exposures, ten exposures is not a big deal. It's when you constantly receive exposures when it starts to become a big deal. What we want to do is take x-rays every, every six months on someone who is at a higher risk for decay or for gum How disease. How do you know they're at a higher risk? If they've had a cavity in the last couple years, if they've had you know teeth extracted in the last couple years, if they have gum disease. Poor oral hygiene. Poor oral hygiene, then you're at more of a risk. Now, high, if you're high sugar diet. High sugar diet, drink a lot of pop. Now, if you're someone that comes in regularly, you haven't had a cavity in years, you know, you might be on schedule to get x-rays, but... I was like, yeah, you don't need to get x-rays this time. You know, we'll wait another six months. Right. But at least once a year because you can have a baby in nine months. You can make a whole human. So imagine how many cavities you get in nine months. Right. It really only takes 48 hours for the enamel to be broken by bacteria. Is it true that um, a woman who's pregnant has, it's it, that it does mm. something to their mouth or to their enamel? Um, we've heard it. I think that's more of an old wives show. Now there are... Uh, there is pregnancy gingivitis that patients get. They tend to, to get gum problems when they're pregnant due to hormonal changes in the body while the, during the pregnancy. But in terms of, and I've, I've heard this a million times, well, when I had a baby and I lost calcium in my teeth and I got decay, 
I don't think there's any scientific proof of that, but I have seen pregnancy uh, uh, cyst on the gums, pregnancy tumors, they call them. They're not really? really, yeah, they're not really, they're not serious, but patients will come in, usually gum problems that, that we'll see during pregnancy. And you can avoid all that because your teeth should be clean as a whistle if you're pregnant or anticipate getting pregnant because you do not want that gum disease bacteria crossing the placenta and going towards to the baby. Ba- can, bacteria that causes gum disease is linked to multiple problems with babies, including low birth weight. Right. So that's, really? yep. So keeping your teeth clean when you're pregnant or anticipating to be pregnant is very important. And having active gum disease where you're having, you know, inflammation, swelling, it's bleeding, you know, you want to have that under control while you're pregnant because, like I said, there are complications with that they've had low birth weight and preterm uh, babies due to uh, gum disease. That's right. Wow, that's amazing. Especially that's the, something we hadn't talked about. I was going to say, that's something I haven't talked about in a while, but that is that is one of the effects. of Normally we're talking about diabetes and heart disease and Alzheimer's and arthritis and stuff like that related to gum disease, but also low birth weight babies and preterm babies. Pregnancy. Pregnancy, like I say, you want to, because in, in a situation you stop and think your body is fighting a chronic situation, but you also at the same time need to be in optimum health to grow that baby. So you don't want to incorporate any any uh, negative factors such as uh, inflammation in the tissue towards uh, during your pregnancy. My goodness. And we we basically we try to, especially in the first trimester that type of thing. We are very conservative. We don't take X. I, I always tell patients I treat it as if, if it was my wife and she was pregnant, and I wouldn't take an X-ray at this point or do this, that, or the other. I would wait until after the baby is born. And cleanings, yes, definitely. But some of the other procedures we just would postpone I like to until after the baby is born wow women, women unless it's an emergency if they're all emergencies don't suffer toe. with any pain but you don't want to <laughs> you right. know women just it just seems are there any other things that are common to women that are not common to men as far as dentistry is concerned I think they tend to see <clears throat> since women have to take vitamin D and they tend to have osteoporosis in their senior years um, there is a little bit of a uh, uh, information on that and whether it contributes to gum disease and bone loss in the jaw also. Also, we also have women who take uh, the medications for osteoporosis, which can uh, cause problems in the jaw if you have a tooth extracted. So it's very important. Really? Very important that you, you let your dentist know what if you're taking any of those medications for osteoporosis, because we need to know that before a tooth is extracted. Those Here- medications? Oh, go, go on, go on. Those medications are called bisphosphonates. Uh, the real popular one that you always see commercials on TV is for Boniva, Boniva, yeah. Fosamax, uh, Alledronate. Uh, there's a few other ones, but you always let your dentist know all your medications that you what are taking. What tickles me about those commercials, they'll tell you all these pros about the commercial, and then they'll say, may cause, and yeah. then they run down this list, or right. even yeah. death. Right. It's like, what? Right. But uh, that is very important. Uh, also, another thing is that if you've ever had any type of radi- radiation treatment to the jaw or to the neck or even to the chest or breast, we have to know that too because that also can cause effects in the lower jawbone and even in the upper jawbone, mostly in the lower jawbone after radiation treatment for cancer treatment. Very you important. hear that, ladies and gentlemen? Please repeat that. Call in. We, uh, call in. We have a few more minutes. The, uh, if you've ever had radiation treatment to the neck, uh, chest, breast, or jaw, you have to let us know that, all dentists, you have to let all your dentists know that uh, you've had that type of treatment because that can affect the uh, bone in the jawbone, especially if you have any major dental procedures such as extractions. It'll affect the, the healing process and can sometimes even stop the healing process. And for follow-up treatment after breast cancer, a lot of women receive IV, IV bisphosphonates. That's uh, to to prevent metastasis of the cancer to the bones, and those IV metastasis bis- is the spread. Right, Correct. you want to prevent the spread of cancer from the breast to uh, areas in the bone because that's a very common uh, occurrence following breast cancer. And so they receive IV bisphosphonates, which are supposed to strengthen the bone and prevent that metastasis. However, that that IV bisphosphonate uh, causes the problems that we're discussing more commonly than the pill. Right, like significantly more. Right. So. Make sure you let your doctor know. Serious problem. Wow, that's interesting. Question. Now, when you have hip replacement, Hmm. knee replacement, some kind of replacement. Heart valve. Well, 
I, I wanted to talk about those particular mm -hmm. ones because they say you have to take antibiotics before you go to the dentist. Could you tell me why? When you do, when you have a hip replacement or a knee replacement or any other replacement, you, they instruct you to take um, antibiotics when you go to the dentist before you get a cleaning or an extraction because that bacteria that's in the mouth that causes inflammation, they don't want it to get into your bloodstream and go to the area where your re joint replacement is and cause inflammation there, which can cause, fi well, which they say can cause failure. However, the evidence is not totally there, but it's basically just a precautionary right. measure. It's more a precaution than anything else that, that there's not a, a lot of research showing that there's a direct correlation, but as always, it's better safe than sorry. And it's also always important that when you're going to have these procedures done that you check with your orthopedic surgeon and find out, hey, I'm going to go to the dentist. And a lot of times we get uh, patients who are sent from their orthopedic surgeon who want to make sure that that patient's mouth is clean, they don't have cavities or abscesses or infections before they receive that type of surgery. So when you go into something like that, you want to go in there knowing that you don't have any type of inflammation or infections that could possibly uh, affect your surgery. But we do, uh, and, and we will pre-medicate patients uh, in most cases with uh, amoxicillin or zithromax if they're allergic to amoxicillin. Oh, really? Yeah. And it... Uh, but like I say, we kind of leave it up to their orthopedic surgeon as to, because sometimes they'll come with a letter saying, you know, make, please make sure they are pre-medicated. And it's usually for two years after the surgery if they're having any type of uh, deep cleaning or uh, injections or extractions. Minor things, you, you'll be okay. But uh, anything that's going to involve tooth extraction, deep cleaning, that type of thing, we usually will pre-medicate. And you can take it uh, for up to six hours after the cleaning or the procedure. So it's... Oh, really? Yeah, it's not a panic situation. I had to take the medication. Well, here we can give you the prescription now, and you can go get it. Go ahead and take it. And it's only uh, two grams of amoxicillin, which is uh, four tablets. It used to be a big ordeal, six tablets before, and six tablets uh, six hours later. Now it's, it's, it's very streamlined, and it's easy to so do. So can the dentist give you that prescription? Yeah, yeah. that's usually where, that's where you should get it from. Right. Dentists can write all prescriptions. We write any prescription. Um, that's involved with now, what we're doing. We, there are also other situations that we pre-medicate for. Typically, these are serious heart conditions, heart valve replacements, uh, grafts, um, but that's birth that. defects. But a lot of those right. issues, a lot of those patients who have those heart problems, they're probably in the hospital. So we're probably not seeing those patients. So typically what we're pre-medicating for is uh, hip replacements, knee replacements. And also, too, in some dialysis patients, too, they'll have a shunt in their arm for their dialysis, and a lot of times their urologist or their nurse practitioner at the uh, where they get their dialysis will want them to be pre-medicated, and they'll usually send a letter with the patient for dialysis patients. A lot of times we'll pre-medicate also. But that's at the, at the request of their Isn't physician. it amazing how much you have to know about medicine to be a dentist? I mean, it well, that, seems like you're very well-versed in medicine. Well, and as you can see, I've been a dentist for 30 years. My son's been a dentist for four years. And he did a residency also. And you can see dentistry nowadays is geared more. I mean, we are the physicians at oral cavity. Um, you know, we see patients with cancers like, you know, any other physician will see. And we see patients with cancers and conditions the patient had no idea that's what that was. They thought it was just a sore that wouldn't heal, or they thought it was an irritation. And uh, next thing you know, we're getting a biopsy on it. And uh, we've had patients that have had serious, serious surgeries, and they, they had no idea that it was an ameloblastoma or something like that. And we have actual cases where patients, and they just had no clue until they came in and we saw it and diagnosed it. Wow. So you it should always get a oral, give oral cancer exams for all of our patients also. Really? Yeah, it's including an exam. You get an oral cancer exam. What is an oral cancer exam? How, what does it entail? When we do an oral cancer exam, we t we check the, the most common areas for oral cancer are the floor of the mouth and the side of the tongue. Floor of the mouth. That's I probably shouldn't under even your tell. Tongue? I probably shouldn't <laughs> even say that. But the most common areas are the floor of the mouth and where is that? Floor of the mouth is under the tongue. Uh, okay. Yeah. Floor of the mouth and the lateral borders of the tongue. I shouldn't say this, but that's the most common areas for. Why oral should cancer. you say it? Because now everybody's going to be looking in the mirror at home. Thinking well, they have a world cancer, but if you taking their tongue, going <laughs> yeah, around. taking their tongue, sticking it out. But the, those are the most common areas. So when we check for oral cancer, we check the floor of the mouth, the tongue, the back of the the back of the throat, the lips, uh, the neck, checking for any lymph nodes. Um, yep. 
And those are the, that's what that's what the tonsils, of, tonsils that's what consists the of an oral cancer, exam. right? Um, and also too, we don't want to try to panic everybody because everybody doesn't have oral cancer. It's not really a, a serious uh, problem for a lot of people. However, people have a chronic history of smokers, drinking. Uh, chronic denture irritations. You have an area where, say, you have a denture or partial or whatever, and it's constantly keeping sore, been sore for years, and won't heal. Those type of things. And I say mostly in patients who are uh, chronic alcohol and chronic smokers. You have to really have to look for any sores or bumps or lumps or things that won't heal. And typically, people who have oral cancer are over the age of sixty. Right. So. You mostly see the seniors. Not too many young. Although we have, I have, we did have. I've had two that uh, I had a young lady who used to work as a dental assistant, and she was a smoker. This was years ago. And she got married. Her husband was in the military. They moved to Germany, and she smoked. And when she came back, they moved back here to the United States after about 10 years, and she noticed a little lump in her cheek one day. And I hadn't seen her years, and she called me. I thought she was coming to visit, and she said she wanted me to check something out. And she did have a cancer in her cheek near her saliva gland, which was caught early, removed, and she's doing great. Well, let's quickly, we'll get this wrapped up. Let's give them the name of that plan again. Sure. Um, the name of the plan is the Healthy Michigan Plan. It's through Delta Dental, and it'll be supplemental with your health insurance that you receive, whether it's Medicaid or a Obamacare health plan. Uh, the, the website to apply is www.michigan.gov forward slash MI Bridges. And the web or the phone number is 855-789-5610. And our phone number is 313-883-3050. There's people there right now to talk to you. We're on Woodward in the Davison in Highland Park, two blocks north of the Davison. And remember, if your teeth are not becoming to you, then you should be coming to us. Thank you, Doctors Livingston, and my other guest has come in, and we just have a few minutes with him. And um, is Sean there? Oh, yep. We're going for a quick break. We'll be right back. Right back. 